Just give me the glasses. You want these? Come and get them. Come on, Peter Tingle. Whenever in doubt, we've got to always pray to the gods, and whenever in need of badass scenes, look no further than the TV region. I knew it. I've made it a habit of worshipping my favourite characters, and you seem to like it, so here's volume 3 of the top moments when superheroes went god mode in the movies. Like, share, and subscribe to please the almighty TVCU. Now, when it comes to our friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man, we're usually rooting for the OG Peter Parker, Tobey Maguire, or the new kid, Tom Holland. Look, I know Andrew Garfield's been getting more love ever since the release of No Way Home, but come on, deep down we all know the real hero is Bully Maguire. They love me. Alright, jokes aside, The Amazing Spider-Man has definitely gained some kind of cult status, and it's primarily because of Garfield's criminally underrated performance. Is he God-worthy though is the question? Well, just look at his first encounter with Electro in the 2014 sequel. The scene was a nice little teaser for what would go on to see in the finale, but pay attention to when Spider-Man saves all those innocent civilians from getting electrocuted via the metal railing. Bro used so much of his spider sense that he turned into the freaking Flash! Hey, Warner Brothers, is it too late to recast Barry Allen at this point? <laughs> Never mind, forget that. The effects nicely complement Spidey's powers, and if I'm being honest here, I think the scene's editor deserves God Mode status for pulling it off so smoothly. Come on, let me go! Stop it! Free! I just did 80% of your job, huh? But that, that's how you were paying me? I think I speak for everyone when I say that dragons are the most badass creatures in mythical lore. I mean, they're freaking everywhere. Whether it's any of the dragons from the Game of Thrones franchise or even Charizard from Pokemon. Yeah, I know he's technically a fire type, not a dragon, but look, I don't care, okay? Basically, what I'm trying to say is that these beasts are the ultimate benchmark for establishing yourself as a god level fighter. So when Shazam brutally smacked Ladon with his overpowered thunder punch, I was nothing short of amazed. More than anything else, his whole vibe changed from cranky man child to brutal warrior in just a matter of seconds. Fury of the Gods isn't exactly what you'd call Oscar-worthy material, but that fight scene earned Shazam some brownie points for finally living up to his comic book counterpart. Just because your father's power is surging through me, that doesn't technically make us related, you know? And I'm gonna be 18 in like five months, so... Stick to saving the world, kid. Yeah, you know, like, that's... Okay, cool. Normally, if you see me talking about Ant-Man's god powers, it's usually when he becomes Giant Man. However, in this case, I'm turning the tables, and not like Michael Scott. Well, 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 how the turntables... Scott Lang is one of those characters who takes the term size matters very seriously. Of course, he's all about equality, so he really doesn't care whether the size itself is big or small. Take his final battle with Yellow Jacket, for example. Bro goes subatomic mode and wrecks the villain so badly that he looks like this now. Yeah, I'm not sure Darren Cross would have signed up for such a question fate, but at the same time, subatomic mode looks sick AF. This was also the first time we actually got to see the Quantum Realm close up, and Ant-Man got a super hype for what's to come in future installments. Yeah, that hype clearly didn't work out the way he thought it would. All that for a drop of blood? No. No, of course not. Nice work, guys. Excellent. Good team effort all around. Go up. Sonic the Hedgehog deserves god status simply for being able to bounce back after the horrendous first trailer. No, seriously, with all the backlash this movie received for Sonic's character design, I never thought it would become such a success that a third film would now be in development. I think you have something that belongs to me. Now, if I were to talk about a standout moment from this one, it's gotta be that final battle between Sonic and Dr. Eggman. Jim Carrey's an energetic actor, so his performance really added to the intensity of the battle, which made Sonic's final outburst even more epic. If you've played the games, you'll 
know about supersonic mode and its depiction in the film was pretty badass. Right from that scintillating assault on Eggman's ship to the sonic thunderball. This sequence kept us engaged and entertained all the way through. Admit it, we've all been deceived at one point or other in our lives. It's kind of why Sigma males are a thing nowadays, eh? But superheroes are no different, and we get to see it in full effect in Spider-Man Far From Home. Man, Jake Gyllenhaal really needs to work on his public image, doesn't he? He can't Taylor Swift in real life and Peter Parker on the big screen. I'm glad I'm not working in his PR team because such actions have brutal consequences. Go fire all the drones! No! As far as Spider-Man's concerned, he takes sweet revenge in the best possible way. Bro turned into a spider god with the way he was evading all those drones and, once again, the effects seriously amp up his performance. It was great to see such an amazing portrayal of the iconic Spidey sense, but Mysterio still manages to call in one last scan with that misleading video message. Once a liar, always a liar, I guess. Stark was right. You do deserve that. You can't trick me anymore. If there's one thing I'm grateful to the Shazam sequel for, it's the return of Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman. Princess Diana is a character who's just as important as Superman or Batman in the DC Universe, so she deserves her flowers, especially in my list. Of course, I don't need to explain why she fits in line with the theme of today's video, like she's a literal goddess, and I'm not saying that in a simping way, okay? As far as an entry-worthy scene is concerned, just look at how she takes down an entire army of goons in the middle of a fight with Ares. It kind of doubles up as a raid moment and I'm all for it because angry beauties just seem to have an accentuated appeal. Alright, back to the topic at hand now, okay? Wonder Woman totally wipes the floor with her opponents and even lifts a goddamn tank for good measure. Man, I wish I could get me a girl who could do both. Ah, the tricky quickie strikes again in what is most definitely an S-tier scene. Quicksilver might be all about the laughs and giggles, but when it comes to saving people within microseconds, he turns into a reliable boss man. The X-Mansion scene is quite easily the biggest flex you'll ever see in terms of speed powers in the Marvel Universe. Bro really pulled off a Michael Jackson moonwalk in the middle of saving countless mutants. Of course, the explosion effects do add to the overall vibe of the scene, and then they exaggerate Quicksilver's powers to a certain degree. However, what this man pulled off was nothing short of remarkable and showcase just how fast he really is. I mean, don't get me wrong, the kitchen scene was top class, but this type of rescue is literally the kind you pray for when stuck in a dead-end situation. If you're a sci-fi lover, you're welcome. Superheroes might have gained mainstream prominence because of the MCU, but back in the pre-millennial era, we had guys like Neo from The Matrix inspiring young souls all over the world. The final battle between him and Agent Smith, or um, Agent Smiths, went from zero to 100 real quick, all thanks to Keanu Reeves realizing that he is indeed the one. What part do I even highlight here? Is it when he holds the barrage of bullets? Is it when he calmly deflects all of Smith's punches like a total badass? Or is it when he fuses with Smith, only to completely destroy him? This is a clear-cut 10 out of 10 scene with flawless execution, and it's achieved legendary status for good reason too. It also served as Neo's slow transition into the famous assassin everyone knows as John Wick. Now, imagine a multiverse where both these characters meet each other. That would be a sight to behold. Atmosphere. 
You know, if your production studio keeps on going on about how powerful you are, then you do need to prove it. We're living in a generation where you need to show the receipts that claim you're legit. That was the problem with Captain Marvel for most of the Infinity Saga. I mean, yeah, she was only summoned after the events of Infinity War, but come on, Carol Danvers has been around since the 90s. Surely she could have flexed a little when Thanos went around wreaking havoc with the Infinity Stones. Well, she totally redeems herself in this scene where she takes down the Mad Titan's warship in just a matter of seconds. See, this is the kind of stuff people want to see in the theatres. If Brie Larson was a likeable actress, I might have even put this one at the top of my list. I like this one. Okay, ignore what I said in the previous entry. There's no character here who's going to be Superman when it comes to God Mode entries. The Man of Steel's no pushover, even when he's facing off against his fellow Kryptonians. The world engine scene was, of course, a terrifying sequence which could have very well spelt the end of the world. No, seriously, look at that machine. Even the Hulk would probably retreat from such a device. Luckily, Kal-El is the alien god humanity needs as he takes down the world engine in a series of events that fill us up with all kinds of adrenaline. For one single man to take down something of that stature is no simple feat regardless of how overpowered he might be. And that's why Henry Cavill takes the honours today. And that's the end of my list. Need some more? Well, here, why don't you check out one of these?